nice intro. Beautiful. You, thank you. Thanks. You're, you, you're dead to me. What's the matter with you? <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. We just met last night. Say again? We just met last night. Yeah, we did. We did. But we're already really close. We're close. Theo admitted to us that he, once he went on that karaoke stage, there was no getting him off. And that was fantastic. That was commitment. It was. It was. It was. Thank you, thank you all, I tell you. It's, it's my favourite thing, and I actually kind of wanted it to be the end, so that I could completely embarrass myself without really, you know, probably minding too much, but... Note for next time, Robbie. Be sure it's... No, it was, it was a great way to open it for me. I, was, I loved it, and everyone's so passionate and so generous. It was, it was awesome. So I kept going off and thinking, let someone else have the stage for a minute. No, 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 I love this song. <laughs> oh, I love this song. <laughs> That's what I kept saying to Richard, actually, I was like, so can I do another song, do you think, Richard? Do you think we could like, get a, give someone else a chance? And they were like, really, really? It's well, I said, Theo, nine in a row is considered... I was gauche. like, What's, what am I here for, you know? If not, if not the heart. Love me, obviously. <laughs> well, this is your moment, Junior. Enjoy. Theo Devaney, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. The boys, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Woo! Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I think I've just been out charismed. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Granny. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> You're right. Oh, you see that? Let's do a selfie. Put these guys behind. Oh yeah. Let's do it. We're gonna do a selfie. Gosh, all that light. Look at all that light. Thank you, Granny. All right. I have the tea and biscuits on your uh, on your bedside table tonight. All right. Okay. So, uh, how does this work? Do I do back and, do back and forth? Okay. You guys are claiming my attention right now, so I'll come with you. So, hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Hi. I was wondering, what was your first reaction when you got invited to do a convention? Like, did you know much about what happens here, or um, what was your first instinct? My first instinct when I was invited to a convention. Well, I did the first convention I did was in the UK. Woo! Um, I actually had no idea what to expect. Um, although Mark, when I worked, when we were filming, Mark said. You haven't been on Twitter yet, have you? It's like, no. It's like, yeah. It's like, right, okay. Don't go on Tumblr, mate. Don't go on Tumblr. It's like, okay. And it was like, and then the conventions. Ooh. So, so I did. I had a vague foreboding. Was pretty much what, what I could, all I could say. But then. Um, yeah, I was really, really excited, and I, it was like, uh, let me think about this for all of half a second. Yeah, I think I'm really up for that. So yeah, that was, I didn't really have any expectations, but I was amazed at the, the love and the, the positivity when it, when it happened, yeah. And that's why last night, you know, for karaoke, it was sort of like, I've got to go to karaoke. No one invited me. I totally invited myself. Because the karaoke in the UK was, you know, was fun. But yeah, last night's was really something else. So. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that answer your question? Yes, yeah. thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Bye. Hello. Hi. What's um, your name? Pardon? What's your name? Cass. Hi, Cass. Hi. How are you? Um, speaking of karaoke, I, uh, I enjoyed your dance to Time Warp last night. <laughs> thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was, that, I don't know if that was my finest hour, but I appreciate it. <laughs> being very generous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, it just got me kind of wondering what's, you know, your favorite or go-to song to dance to. Oh, wow. Okay, well, there's quite a few. That's a tough one. Um, I want to give you the best possible answer I can. Um, anything from Rocky Horror. 
pretty much is is amazing. There's so much there's so much good in that in that show. Um, to dance to. Um, what can't I what can't I sit down to? Um, well, what can't you sit down to? Help me out here. What's your favourite? What? What's your favourite song? <laughs> I'm turning the tables on you. Oh. What? <laughs> oh. It's not easy, is it? It's not easy. <laughs> and you had the question prepared. Okay, well look, it's not the most glamorous answer, but actually Macklemore can't hold us. For some reason when that comes on, I'm just like, woo, bouncing okay, through wait. the ceiling. I, I think I have, um, Shut Up and Dance With Me. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Yeah, I like yeah, that song. That's great. I like the way the woman owns the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shut up and dance with me. I want to have a conversation and talk about love and stuff. Shut up and dance, boy. <laughs> That's the kind of women I like, you know? <laughs> Great, well thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely weekend. Hello. 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 Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. <laughs> so, um, so, this is your first convention. Um, we're really happy to have you, so I wanted to... Oh, creation uh, convention. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, what has been your favorite memory so far this weekend? Oh, so far. Um, okay. Well, karaoke pretty much dominates my memory so yeah. far. Yeah, you danced to Shake It Off last night. That was um, really fun. Shake It Off was really... I, you know, I didn't even realise that Shake It Off was going to like make me want to come out and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so it probably is Shake It Off, actually, because someone uh-huh. came up to me at breakfast. I think it was... Terry? Terry? Hey, hello. Came up to me at breakfast and said, um, I just thought you were really great last night in the way that you danced to Taylor Swift. And, you know, <laughs> I was like, I did that? Oh, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's my favourite mi- my favorite little minute. And also just Richard Spate Jr., who I love massively. Just seeing him again, and his lovely hair and his beard. <laughs> that was the first time I saw him again. That was great, yeah. Nice. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, okay, so the last time we... Saw Gavin, he kind of left and went off to the world. What do you think Gavin is doing now, in, and how do you think he is adapting to 21st century life? Oh, well. How is, how is Gavin doing, and how is, what is he doing, and how is he adapting to 21st century life? Gosh, I think everyone's got an answer to that question, haven't they? He's probably dancing to Taylor Swift. <laughs> And um, doing a lot of really bad karaoke. Well, that's Jensen's thing, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the Dean thing. Um, you know, I, I've got many different... I mean, I could give you a really serious answer, which might be a bit boring. I could just give you a kind of <laughs> comedy answer. I actually went before Christmas. I went to New Orleans for the first time. And I was walking down Bourbon Street. Now, I'm from Britain. Who's been to New Orleans? Yes, you have. Hell, by the way, so. um, and Bourbon Street? Do people know Bourbon Street? Yeah. It's mental. It's completely insane. And I'm from Europe, and we have some pretty insane places, streets of partying. But in, on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, there were people just face down in their own vomit. But smiling. And you're like, come on, you're alright, buddy. He's like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Ah, great. You leave me here, buddy. I'm good. And it was just, it's like just really intense, really narrow street, just like people hammered, like good old boys from the countryside, you know? And then like, just people like me, scared, scared people. Um, And like, you know, ladies of the night. um, People throwing necklaces at people in the street, like, wanging them in the head. I was like, this is just so bad. And I thought, Gavin in New Orleans would be an amazing... He would get so abused. I wanted to ask, what was your favorite scene on Supernatural to shoot with? Oh, oh that's a good question too. There's, um, there's actually, well, okay, so there's a funny story. I'll try to keep it a bit brief. I really like the way that the final scene with me and Mark comes out. Where I'm sort of saying, so, thanks for nothing. But also, I miss you, Dad. <laughs> and now you're just letting me go. And, stuff and we that was the first scene we shot which, which 
which is like, I just met Mark five minutes earlier. And I'm like saying the big goodbye to my dad. And it was pouring with rain and we were three hours uh, behind schedule. And I was just like, this is just, this, how am I supposed, what am I supposed to do with this? And, um, but the gloom and the rain really, really suited it. And I was, yeah, that was, that was really fun in a sense because it was just me and Mark connecting, even though we'd only just met. Uh, briefly before. But actually my favourite scene was this one where I get possessed, um, which didn't go into the actual show. Um, and I don't know what their choice, why they made that choice, but I basically Mark possesses me and then I, he like just throws me around like a puppet for like, you know, about half a minute. And then, um, and then my eyes glow and then I do this like, he flies out of me again. And it's like my favourite scene, it looked great, and it didn't get into the show. But, it's actually on YouTube somewhere. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, the VFX thing, yeah, 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 exactly. So, they, yeah, those guys did a great job on that. So it's online somewhere, that's my favourite one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Um, obviously, you had fun at karaoke last night. I did, yes. Does it show? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, and you're perky and happy, so everything's good. Do the best. <laughs> and, so. and obviously, there's going to be some evidence of fun last night. I have evidence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I was wondering what was your favorite bits. Like, obviously, you're going to have more than one favorite. But what was your favorite, like, maybe top three, top five or something like that? What, from, from what? Karaoke last night. My favourite top five. <laughs> top, do we need to go top ten? Top Can five? I remember? Ten? <laughs> well, my favourite top five, what, songs? Just any, just moments. Moments, any. okay, okay. Uh, okay, I enjoyed, um, well, I, I enjoyed playing Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else really enjoyed it, but I really did. <laughs> probably a low point for everyone but me, but I was like, I'm so into this song, it's so cheesy. Um, and I, I really liked, um, I loved it when, what was the Bon Jovi that Brianna did? Yeah, Blaze of Glory, because I actually had thought about that, and when I heard it, I thought, I don't care if this is Brianna's song, I'm going out and doing a duet with her. So that was really awesome. Um, Gil McKinney. Woo! Just anything he does just makes me really warm inside. Uh, he's just a beautiful man, inside and out. Out, especially. But I'm not intimidated, you know. Um, no, he, he's lovely, and I love him, and it's nice to see him again. Um, and just, just looking, I mean, I did like a little video pan of people at one point, and like, I played it back this morning, and I was just like, oh man, this is so great. <laughs> People are so lovely, and you know, it's really that, that that was it. Many moments where I just made eye contact with people, and they were really into it, and that that's like everything. And as an actor, you don't get to do that very often, and especially even if you're in a play, you can feel people, but you never look at them directly unless you're doing like a Hamlet soliloquy, and even that's a bit scary, so you don't want to do that. Um, but when you're doing karaoke, <laughs> anything goes, right? But yeah, so it was those moments. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Somebody just stole my question last time, so I'll just ask you a new one. Okay. Um, I'll just say what everybody is thinking. Will we see Gavin again? Ah. Uh, Probably can't answer that, though. No, I mean, if I came on here dressed up in a pirate outfit, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and did my Scottish accent, then probably you'd see him. But actually, I don't know. I don't know. That sucks. Well, it sucks that I don't know. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I genuinely, you know, I, I don't know, and if I did, I probably wouldn't say. Um, but uh, I'd love to see Gavin again. I think he's got a huge amount of story and potential. You know, I think he's, a, he's an interesting character. And also, when you play a character for one episode, you just, you throw something out there, you know? You don't really know how it's going to evolve. Um, I, was, I loved doing that one episode because it was, it had a story and a narrative that was really really exciting and I got to work with Mark really intimately and that was wonderful um, but yeah you know I think you don't really know a character until you've got a bit of an arc you know what I mean and you can really discover the nuances and you know and then it becomes complicated like with the boys you know they've been there what 10, 10 seasons and it never stops I mean the same with like Castiel you know it never stops evolving 
And those are the roles that you want to play as an actor. You want to do ones that evolve, you know, and surprise you. So let's hope it does happen. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. So obviously you really love Rocky Horror, which <laughs> yeah. thank you, that was a lot of fun last night. Yeah. But um, if you could play anyone from the movie, who would you be? Frank and Furter. <laughs> Damn it. I think it was like an enduring disappointment of my life if I didn't get to play that role at some point, you know? Have you ever um, done the like audience participation version of the movie? Sorry, can you repeat that? Have you ever done the audience participation version of the movie, like in theaters? How, do I like the audience participation? What? Have you done it? If you watch Rocky Oh no, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Rocky Horror movie sort of audience dress yeah, up. Yeah, there's certain like lines everyone screams out during the movie. Have you ever done that? No. Oh, okay. Is it? Is it? Is it? When's the next one? <laughs> I don't know, that's what I'm doing for my birthday party this year. So I'll just get to it. <laughs> oh, someone, t yeah, someone tweet me when there's one happening and I'll, I'll go there, wherever it is. <laughs> awesome, yeah, no, that's, is that the question? Was that your question? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great, yeah. Well, that's opened up a can of worms now. I want to go there, I need to go, we need to do this. We'll do this together if you just tweet me, yeah. All right. Yeah? All right. Awesome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, the character Gavin was not originally played by you. That's but, correct. Yeah. What have you done to make the character your own? Thank you for that thoughtful question. Um, uh, I actually, uh, yeah, when I was, I, I, I saw the original scene with, um, the original episode with Gavin in it when I, before I auditioned. And um, fortunately for me, there isn't a huge amount that was established by that character because he's kind of a ghost. So there wasn't a lot of talking, there wasn't a huge characterization because I think that episode, um, Weekend at Bobby's, right? Um, was uh, Bobby, by the way, Jim Beaver. As, a, as, a, as an old school English actor who's done mostly theatre and has a classical training, you know, when you meet an American actor like, like him who is just, he's just amazing at everything. You know, and he was in Deadwood, and that was one of my favorite shows. And he's wonderful, but that, yeah. So that episode, and, and I didn't. There wasn't a huge amount done with the character in that in that episode, so it was easier for me to sort of say, okay, that was a ghost. This is the real deal. This is the guy, <coughs> terrified, shaking, weird. You know, out of out of his element. You know, um, but yeah, it was. I didn't feel like I was. I had something hanging over me. I felt like there was still quite a lot of space for me to to, to play around. Um, but yeah, when something's been played by somebody else, you do feel that kind of like, wow, okay, this is, is special, in a sense, because you owe, you're, you're sharing that role with somebody else, forever. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Oh, <laughs> curtsy, ladies and gentlemen, yes. Of course. Well, you're a prince, so. Thank you very much. Kind of have to. Yes. A bow. Oh. Okay. Alright. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing, whatever. Um, so, what is your most embarrassing moment? Or like a super embarrassing story? A oh, super embarrassing story. Oh man, why couldn't you have written this down and like given me a chance to prepare it? <laughs> what is my most embarrassing moment? Well, okay, so I grew up with a very forceful mother. Um, this is my real mother. <laughs> so I was thinking my dad is such a massive, you know, Mark, Mark A. Shepherd is such a big deal, but no, my actual mum is much scarier than Mark. Um, and she would routinely humiliate me as a way of kind of building my character when I was young, you know. Um, so I've got a million of those stories, but I don't really want to get into that because it just could get a bit dark and weird. Um, my most embarrassed moment, oh, no, you don't know, I, I don't know, it's not that interesting, but it's actually like, I'm a big fan of cricket. Which, Woo -hoo! I love that, a smattering of hoop. Um, I was, I've been a fan of cricket since I was very, very small, and I used to be very good at it. I used to play like in a regional level um, and captained my school team and stuff. Because it's a mixture of strategy, you don't need to be particularly fit, it's like a British sport, you know. It takes place, you don't have a, you know, you can literally roll out of bed, have a glass of pins, and be like, come on, chaps, we have a little cricket. <laughs> Alright, yeah, let's do it. It's a really good way to like tour the English countryside, seeing beautiful spots, 
and meeting lovely people and drinking pims, <laughs> tea and cake. Um, and basically, I, I had a rude awakening when I was about 26, and I'd been an actor for like six years. And a guy I met at a play said, oh, tomorrow we're going to go and have a little game of cricket, you know, Village Green, up in North London. I was like, yeah, okay, cool, I'll come. He's like, yeah, I'll just pick up the numbers, you know, no pressure. I was like, no, no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of good at this game. Uh, I'm not scared, don't worry. Um, anyway, I went there, and I was bowling in the net, which is sort of like practice net type thing. And I was like, yeah, this is great, you know, I'm bowling, I'm just like, you know, woo, my body, muscle memory, you know, everything's going well. And then I went out onto the pitch and I was like, yeah, yeah, come on, give us the ball, come on, I'll have it. And you have to bowl six balls, right? It's called an over, where each bowler has to bowl six balls consecutively. It doesn't, if you bowl a ball too high or too wide, or your foot goes over a particular line, it's cast as a no ball and you have to repeat that ball, okay? This over of six balls went on for 15 balls. <laughs> and... I, got, I think I gave away about 60 runs, which is about 10 times more than even just a bad score for me. And I literally, throughout that, I was like, it was never going to end. And you know, like you think time, like relativity, Einstein, you know, sitting next to a pretty girl, an hour goes like a minute, sitting on a hot stove, a minute goes like an hour, right? This was like 30 seconds going into like 30 years of my life. I was literally, there's a moment where I'm just like, I would rather be anywhere else than where I am right now. And I went through embarrassment, through humiliation, through just like dread, and out into this like absurd laughing. And I was just like, oh, this is just, and everyone's just gonna be like, oh my God, I'm watching a mental collapse. <laughs> And it was, it was, it was the, the most, probably the most embarrassing thing. Like, because if you go in and say, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, I'll have a go. I'm not particularly, I don't know, I'll try it. I'm not that good. And you fail, no worries. Open heart, take it as, take it, as it comes. But if you go in like, I'm the daddy. <laughs> and then you let everybody down. That's the most, that's the most humiliating thing. Self-created. So there we go. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Sorry. A long one. Hello. Hi. Um, I Hello. was wondering, uh, what's it like having Mark Shepard as your dad and Ruth Connell as your grandma on the show? Okay. Well, <laughs> it's oh gosh, it's, it's pretty great because I think I think we're the only British actors in the show. Sure. Um, someone might may know more than I do, but I, you never know. It's supernatural. There might be some fact that has escaped me. <laughs> well, I mean, ask anyone here and they'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so, so I think we're the only British uh, actors. And they're lovely. I mean, I, it's, really, uh, it's really cool because if people think that I'm, like, as attractive as them in a kind of, even a genetically associated <laughs> way, <gasps> I'm very flattered by the associations. I mean, um, you are, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. yes. <laughs> that was very quick, well done. Walked into it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Ruth is, Ruth is stunning and gorgeous and also quietly strong, which I really like, you know. Because strong women in, in film and TV, you know, it doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen as often as it should, right? But when, but when someone's able to be strong and also quiet, that's amazing. And Ruthie has this element where you're just like, there's a boundary here, and I'm not quite sure where it is, but <laughs> when I cross it, things are going to get really interesting. <laughs> and I'm somebody who likes to push boundaries a bit, so no, she's extremely kind and sweet. And Mark, the great thing about Mark is that as an actor and as a, as a performer, you know, in his character, he's got similar tropes, you know. There's a reason why he's so convincing as Crowley. <laughs> He's not in the room, is he? <laughs> no, I think we'd know if he was. <laughs> no, because he's, he's, he's got depth and complexity. And so, 
you know, I'd, it's, it was it was a pleasure to work with him briefly. I'd love to work with him more. It's a love it's a lovely team they have. Yeah. So I'm very honoured to be a part of that. This trio of British uh, evil people. Because <laughs> that's never happened before, has it? <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Theo. Hello. So you were absolutely hilarious last night. Hilarious. Is that a and, compliment? Uh, and entertaining. <laughs> Um, so my question is, you had an, um, quite a funny bit in the season 9 gag reel with Mark, where you kind of <laughs> waved your hands like this and told him to F off and kind of Hang on, did, I, did I wave my hands like this? <laughs> <laughs> or was that just your bit of embellishment? <laughs> I maybe did it a bit more feminine. <laughs> oh, okay. well, just a little bit. He kind of walked away and went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really great. That was great. And uh, so I was kind of just wondering what was the precursor to that, because it really made Okay, me that's a great question, and I'm so glad you asked it, because I so <laughs> loved that moment. It was hilarious. It was actually funnier to be a part of than it was uh, probably even to watch it. Um, if anyone's watched the season 9 gag reel, <laughs> it's mostly Mark, isn't it? <laughs> Which is hilarious. Because um, he's just a very funny person, you know, when he, when he, when he wants to be. Um, and because he, he's in the moment, he's very in the moment, he's very responsive. He's got that very like improvisational immediacy about him. And I'm quite, I know, I'm quite kind of like, I've, I've got my plan, and then I'll sort of figure it out as I go. And um, there's something comic in the way that we were interacting anyway, right? It's father and son is like, get out of here! Blah, blah. It's sort of, sort of a bit roistering and whatever, that's a really weird word, Roist, roistering. Um, <laughs> Basically, I was holding the door, and I'm, 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 I'm going to the new world, you can't stop me. And then he goes, um, he just looks at me, and I, I just think I just lost my line. And so I went, oh. Because <laughs> I was angry with myself, you know. So you're not saying fuck off to the world, you're saying fuck off to me, me, fuck off. You idiot. Pardon my French, by the way. Am I allowed to swear here? Some, yeah, it's, it's Canada, it's Canada. Be careful. Um, Anyway, so I said, fuck off, under my breath, and then he just, he just looks at me, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Turns to the camera and goes, all right. <laughs> so it was an extremely funny moment, and on the gag reel, I actually look back, see what he's done, and then start laughing even more, so, yeah. And there's that thing within that performing, look, if you're not careful, you know, a day can really get away, with, away from you when you're just laughing all the time. You're just looking at each other in the eye and it's like... <laughs> no, no, seriously, you're going gonna to do it. <laughs> okay, just... <coughs> say, say, say you like it. <laughs> and it's like never ends. So yeah, That was it. Thank you for asking that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, I don't need to ask you if you had a good time at karaoke, but I do need to tell you I had a fantastic, amazing time at karaoke. Oh, good. <laughs> I am the tiger. Okay. Um, um, my question is, can you describe sort of the family dynamic relationship, in your own words, between Gavin and... Rowena and Crowley, and how they maybe relate to your own family dynamics. Wow. Okay, so the Crowley family dynamics, the McLeod clan McLeod dynamics, clan. compared with my own family <laughs> <laughs> Well, bizarrely enough, we've already gone there a little bit, haven't we? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think I, the reason I can relate to Gavin and did relate to Gavin, and still do relate to Gavin, is because, you know, I have, I have a very combative family. My parents are both Leos, right? Woo! Which apparently is a major thing. And even though I'm a rationalist and a realist, <laughs> generally, people say, astrology, <laughs> what? And I say, have you, did you grow up with two Leos as parents? And they're like, no. I'm like, then you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, so, it was constant fighting, like, every day, all day, but it was coming from a place of love, you know, real love. And I think that's what I see in the relationship between Gavin and, uh, and Crowley, Fergus, is that there's love, 
often there's love that can't express itself in a, in a family dynamic. And I think that's what's interesting. And let's face it, that's really the spine of supernatural in almost all the dynamics. It's about family and about how far you can go without destroying the bond. Even when you try to destroy the bond, you can't. And in fact, when you try, that's when it's hardest. You know, it's like, if you let it drift, maybe it's easier to become estranged from people who you, you're close with. But if you try to fight it, you, you fail every time. So I think that's what you see between Crowley and, and Gavin. Um, so between me and my family, I mean, I moved to North America. <laughs> and it's the best decision I ever made. <laughs> This is great. This whole continent is great. It's going to be a popular comment, isn't it? I knew it would be. Uh, cynical. No, it, it's wonderful. And it, you know, they, but it's, it's nice to have a bit, of, a bit of space from the people you love um, because you get perspective. Whereas too much intimacy is, is just, it leads to, you know, destruction. Yeah, it can be heavy. Anyway, does that answer your question? Thank yes, you. very much. Thank you for a brilliant answer from a brilliant actor. Oh, you. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's so sweet. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, excluding Rocky Horror Picture Show and all of that, what would you be your favorite song? Whether it be a theme song or something like that, or just play on a show? My favorite. From, and maybe, uh, from a movie or TV show. My favorite theme song from any show. Or something that's just played on the show. Or something that's played on a show. Or theme song. <laughs> Okay. Any song on any show ever. Yep. Anything you want. Anything. Oh gosh. This is like, I, you know, the problem with me is I want to give you the best possible answer. Um, do you know, I have no idea anything about Pokemon at all. I'm, I'm sorry. My, my neighbours in London, they're like mega Pokemoners. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't relate. I'm like, I feel like I'm really, I'm sorry, I apologise. I need to get on that, I'll solve that. Um, what's my favourite song? Um, Prince of Hell Air. God, can someone write that rap for me? The Prince of Hell Air. No, the Prince of Bel Air. Well, this is the, do you know? Do you know, that is a wicked one, isn't it, actually? The Prince of Bel Air. Oh, do you want to come and do it? Do you want to come too? Yeah, you do. You gotta come up here, babe. You just walked right into that. No, what we'll do is, yeah, come on. Oh yeah, here we go. Everybody, everybody come see. Okay. Boom. Ba boom 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 boom. Ba boom boom. Well, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Boom, ding, ding, ding. That's it, what's the next lesson? Uh, up to the house about seven or eight, and I yelled to the cabin, your home, smell you later. Look at my keys, I was finally there. The sit on my throne, the prince of Bel Air. I think we just missed Woo! Okay, okay, this is great, this is fabulous. Let's just do the middle now. Okay, so, so, in West Philadelphia, all on a race, on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Chilling out, messing, relaxing, all cool and all shooting some people outside of school. When a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in the neighborhood. But one little fight, my mom got scared. She said, move into the auntie and uncle in Bel Air. That was it, whistle. <laughs> well done. This is excellent from these guys. Spontaneous performers. We don't want everyone thinking it's too easy. Well, everyone will want to be performers, yeah? Brilliant, thank you. You guys are great. Uh oh, time. Okay, thank you. Hold on. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, how you doing, man? I just want to let you know a huge fan of the show, visiting all the way from New York City. Oh, rocket! New York City. Yeah. Just have a quick question for you before you roll. What was the best and worst advice you were given on a supernatural set when you first came on? <laughs> the best and worst advice I was given on set. Yes. Oh gosh. From only the cast. 
from the cast. Uh, oh, I don't know. Trust the boys. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, trust the boys. I only, had, I only had one scene with those guys, so they didn't have a chance to really wind me up, which is quite nice. Um, I think Mark was really good. His, his best piece of advice, he said, was... Um, this is a... Yeah, get, get on Twitter, son. Get on Twitter. <laughs> no, his best advice he said was like, you know, don't be afraid to show your anger, real anger. Because sometimes you feel like it's off-putting. Coming from the stage to screen, you know, stage anger is like... It's like volcanic, you know? Um, and screen anger is much more hard-boiled than that. So I was kind of holding back, you know, and I didn't really want to give it too much. And he just said... No, this is real. You really, you really hate me, you know. And so we were like, were you having this conversation over lunch or about a scene? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, um, <laughs> this was after watching loads of TV on his iPad. And he was just like, I was like, I'd really like to run this. He was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then, yeah, I just tapped into some really, some nice anger. And it was just, yeah, a nice reveal. In terms of bad advice, you know, I really can't think of anything. Because I think if I was there a bit longer people would have started to try to sabotage me because I'd have been so good. <laughs> and no North American actor wants to be upstaged, you know, by a Brit. Um, no, I, 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 I didn't have any bad advice, I don't think. But thank you for the question. Sorry I couldn't give you a more complete answer. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Theodore Devaney.